اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله صدری <سلام> The day of judgment or the day of reckoning, that's when Allah is going to judge and reckon the actions of everyone who's going to appear on the day of judgment, which is everyone and all of us and all of mankind. Now, when Allah is going to reward or punish us, we see that a lot of punishment and a lot of reward, people think has already happened in this world. And in this life, for example, whenever they see Allah punishing someone or, for example, something bad happening to someone, people think that Allah has punished them and that they got the punishment for their crimes. And when we look at the crimes and the sins of people, the thing to understand regarding it is that punishment is only meant for the hereafter. Judgment and punishment is reserved for the next life. It's not here. We never get punished here. We are never judged here. When Imam Ali said that this world, there's actions and no accounting, it is actually true. No one is accounting for anything here. No one is accountable for anything here. You can do whatever you want. There's no judgment coming down against you here. And there's no punishment that's going to happen here also. All punishment and all judgment is reserved for the hereafter. This is something that everyone must understand. That anyone who has done something wrong, they should know that the punishment is not here. What happens to them because of the wrongs they have done, sometimes it does happen that they go through a lot of bad stuff because of the wrongs that they have done. Well, this is not actually punishment. This is just the effects of their actions. For example, if someone eats a lot of sugar, they might get diabetes. If someone smokes, they might get lung cancer. The lung cancer is not a punishment for smoking. It is just the effect and hence the sins also. When a person sins, he's not going to be punished for it here. The punishment is coming. What happens here because of sins is just the natural effects of those sins on the person but a person's crimes and sins the reality is that they cannot be punished here that there's no way to judge them here this world in its limited capacity that it's in in its finite nature you cannot have justice and punishment take place in a world like this Punishment and judgment can only happen in the hereafter because all these chain, chains are removed. Now, it could be an infinite judgment that could be passed. And that's why it's the hereafter where the punishment takes place. That is where punishment is happening. Now, in this world, if someone is punished for a crime that he has done. For example, let's say uh, someone steals something 
from someone and is punished for that Islamically in an Islamic court by an Islamic judge, then that's not something that's harmful for him. Actually, that is a blessing because being punished for a crime here actually lessens the punishment in the hereafter. Going through a punishment in this world for something wrong that you have done is something that everyone needs to be asking for. A person came to Imam Ali and begged him to punish him for the crime that he has done. And he prayed to Allah that, Allah, I want to go through the punishment here so I do not have to go through it in the hereafter. Being punished for something here actually lessens your punishment there. It's actually a mercy and a blessing. That's why there's no punishment here. Anything that happens to you, whether it's in the form of a punishment, is also good. So how can this then be punishment? If someone is whipped for something wrong that he has done and he was convicted of the crime and then he was flogged, that crime and the punishment he went through it for the crime is actually a blessing for him because now Allah is going to lessen or he's going to lower the punishment there or maybe wipe it out. So having the punishment here is a blessing. So it cannot be in actuality punishment. Adab, chastisement, punishment cannot be here. It is uh, impossible for punishment to happen here because anything that happens here that goes against you or hurts you is actually helping you. So you see, that's why punishment is only meant for the hereafter and judgment is only meant for the hereafter because uh, when a person does something wrong, yes, it goes against his very nature. A sin and a crime, whether we do it or someone else does it, is something that goes against our very nature. Because our nature has been made on the nature of God, of divine nature. Fitrat Allah lati fatara nasa alayha. Surah Rum, ayat number 30. In this ayat, Allah is saying that man's, uh, that it's Allah's nature that he has made man on in terms of good and evil, uh, good and wrong. In terms of when Allah abhors something, Allah also put that in our nature to abhor that. When Allah likes something, then he also put it in our nature to like that. So we like justice, and we dislike injustice naturally. It is inherent in us to not like something wrong happening. When injustice happens, we do not like it. It is abhorrent to us. We do not feel right when we see it. That's the reason when a person sees a crime, it goes against his very nature and it is harmful for him. That's why Allah has kept sins of people private and away from the eyes of others. Because the more sins we see, the more we hurt our soul. Nowadays, we call it desensitizing. But it's more than that. It just wears us away. It really harms our soul. It hurts it and injures it. That's why Keeping silent on sin, uh, keeping silent on crime, when we see a crime and injustice and not speaking about it is wrong, not because it's an Islamic law, but it goes against our nature. We have to say something about it in order for us to feel good, in order for our soul to be healthy. 
if we don't speak out against crime and oppression and injustice that is happening and when we see it then this is something that goes against our very nature and it is detrimental to our spiritual health that's why anything where Allah says speak out against wrong uh, stand up against oppression is not because Allah wants us to do some obligation it is because it is in our nature that when we see wrong that we speak out or do something against it or stand up against it and if we don't it is detrimental to our spiritual health to our spirit and we start dying inside. Silence kills, and it kills our soul, and takes away the ability then to know right from wrong. And when we lose that ability, then we don't know what we are following and serving is right or wrong. In fact, it won't make a difference at all. We would be following wrong and serving wrong and think that this is right because we made it a habit and destroyed the soul. Now that soul is death. That's why when something wrong is done to go out and to, to fight it and to uh, bring it to justice is life for our soul. Allah, there's an ayat in the Quran where Allah says, Lakum fil fil qisase hayatun. Ya ulul albab. Surah Baqarah, second chapter, ayat number 179. He says, For you in revenge, in exacting revenge, according to the law, not that you take law in your own hands, but exacting revenge according to the law, there's life in this for you. What life is there? That life is in your own soul, that something wrong has been done and you have done something to undo that, to fight against that, to stand up against that. This is life for you. Because when you let go of it, there is a slow death that is happening to your soul. And this is why Allah says, stand up against wrong. When we see something wrong, you stand up against it. Why? Because that is what the soul and the spirit requires of us. And if we don't do it, it is detrimental to us. The rules of, for example, jihad, amr bil maruf, nahyan al munkar, uh, even tawalla, tabarra, all of them are based on the fact, not because they're just rules Allah made up for us. No, because this is exactly what our nature and our fitrat requires for health. Our natural health and our spiritual health, the health of our ruh depends on this. That when uh, something wrong is happening to the extent that we have to go and fight it, it's called jihad. And hence that that is only in the hands of the imam if the imam says it's time for jihad it's wajib to go out why because if let go if we do not respond to it there is spiritual death and demise of our soul that's going to happen and the society is going to die spiritually consciously our conscious is going to die slowly and then you see that we will not even stand up against the more apparent and clear wrongs that are being done. This is why this life, Amr bil Maruf Nahil Munkar, with its own laws and rules that it has, a person stands up and we do that. Why? Because of the fact that there's life for the society, life for us as individuals. And also, for example, Let's say we aren't able to do something. We are not able to stop the injustice from happening. Then do tabarra. Make yourself free of that. Curse those who do wrong. Curse the unjust. Curse the wrongdoers. Doing this curse is life for us. 
because if you don't do it, then our soul gets habituated to wrong and it is slowly going to die away. And that's why when we look at, for example, actual punishment and actual judgment, that's going to happen in the hereafter. But here, our job is not to uh, do complete justice. Even though Allah says that he has sent the prophets to establish justice amongst people. But this is more of a social justice, not the actual justice. It cannot be established here. Actual justice cannot happen here. Here justice is apparently. We apparently saw this person do this and that and hence there you go. If a person has done wrong but there's no proof that he has done wrong, then we cannot punish him in the Islamic law. You can't just accuse someone and that's it. There has to be proof. There has to be witnesses. And if you don't have witnesses, that person is free to go. It happened with Imam Ali also. It happened with Imam Ali. And Imam Ali didn't have witnesses. And the person who took him to court won the case. He won the case because Imam Ali didn't have witnesses. And this is how it works. That's the Islamic law. There has to be witnesses. So here, judgment cannot be complete. In the hereafter, it's complete. Why? Because when a person does something wrong, when a person does something bad, then everything and every nuance and every sort of guidance that Allah is giving him is taken into account. And Allah knows that this person has done this wrong at this time in spite of all the influences otherwise. And all of those things will be put together and he will know exactly that this person, that, that person who's getting the punishment would know that, yes, I deserve this. This is just. Nothing will be hidden from it. Everything will be accounted for. That is judgment. And obviously punishment is going to be there where a person would actually feel it's not going to be, there's not going to be any sort of mercy there in your punishment. Here, punishment is actually a mercy and a blessing. Their punishment is not a mercy and not a blessing. There's no good coming after it. There's no reprieve coming after it. When you get hurt, you don't have the hope that, wow, this hurting of mine might give me some reprieve later on. It doesn't. And that's why it's actual punishment that's there. Here, our job is when someone does wrong, we bring them to justice. We bring them to the door of justice. But justice will happen in the hereafter. When Mukhtar killed uh, and, and, and executed, the assassins and the murderers of the family of Imam Hussein. He did it one by one. He killed them in the most, you can say, horrible way. But you know what? The punishment or whatever they went through is actually not punishment. That wasn't revenge. You think what Mukhtar did was revenge? No, it wasn't. He brought those people who were outward criminals to justice. But that wasn't revenge. Revenge is what Imam Mahdi Sharif is going to do when he comes back. He is going to exact revenge. And that will be exact revenge. That will be revenge. That, and he's going to do that. And this is why when we look at punishment and judgment, Yes, here our job is to bring those people to justice. And that's all it is for us. And this is, in this is life for us. Whether it is anyone who has done any wrong, any injustice that's happening in the world, there is life in us spiritually when we stand up against it. Whether it is Black Lives Matter, whether it is the oppression of the Palestinians in Israel, or any other place where you see wrong happening and that we stand up for that cause, there is spiritual life in that. And if we do not stand up and if we do not say anything, then this is spiritual death.
And we as an individual die and as a society start to die when we do not say anything against wrong. So may Allah bless you all. Thank you for listening in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.